could be going for a referendum through the Constitution Amendment Bill 2020. Instead, the proposers of the BBI initiative are finding themselves in court trying to appeal a high court a landmark ruling that stopped the Constitution amending process. Which way, judicial lords and ladies? Will the courts drop the sword? Meanwhile, the Senate Legal Committee has approved a Senator Kipchumba Murkomen's bill seeking to amend the Elections Act and remove a requirement for individuals vying for MC and MP positions to have a degree. What does this mean to local leaders? Welcome to the show. You can just imagine what a packed show we have for this evening. The President has uh, the rights like any other Kenyan under Article 38 to participate in the political discourse, including um, to support or campaign for any cause. Every stage in constitution making in Kenya is only when we came together, including politicians and presidents, that this process went ahead. And without it, it could not happen. The president, like in Edward VIII, must remain the president if he wants to engage in the affairs of other lesser mortals, then he must abdicate. There are no two options to this matter. Unfortunately, for a, such an important institution of the state like IBC to be dragged into this business. Of course, BBI is the big story. And tonight in studio, we have Robert Alai, a renowned national blogger. But he insists he is a computer scientist, whistleblower, and a cyber activist. Alai will be in the ballot in next year's general elections. We also have Davidson Gibuini, also known as DNG, again. He needs no introduction as he's one of the most recognizable faces in Kenya as a musician, media personality, actor, and an entrepreneur. But just like a lie, he has put his two feet in politics. Where will he be vying? He will be making the announcement on this show. And finally, we have a resident political analyst, Jim <coughs> India, from Emerging Leaders Foundation. Now, good ladies and fair gentlemen, we have officially opened our lines. What question do you have for the two leaders? Text us on triple one, triple four, triple one, and on Twitter at Switch TV Kenya at Fred Mwiteriri. Let's get right into it, gentlemen. Karibu Nisana. We start with you, Robert. Yes. Why now? Why not now? I think this is the right time for for especially the young leaders, mm. the young, young, young emerging leaders to get yes. into politics. It's so easy now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's easy in that Everybody is demanding that the younger people get into politics because they are tired of the old guys, the old narratives, the, uh, the people who doesn't feel like they, 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 they understand the, the issues of the common man. Mm. So I think it's the best time for me to get into politics. But also I, I've been very impatient looking at the leaders. Politics, is, I, I, I thought it was not for me. Mm -hmm. But looking at the leaders and trying to understand what they're trying to do to change lives, everything our leaders do are geared towards two things. Mm -hmm. Either to steal money or to steal elections. <laughs> so you'll be a different leader. I, that's what I want to be. It's, it's very painful sometimes watching people suffer. You know, you go to some parts of the country, people can't even afford 50 bob. In a whole month, they can't get. Mm. You know, people are so poor and the pandemic has made it worse. Mm -hmm. But nobody is taking care of our people. Nobody is thinking of policies for 50 years to come. Yes. We are making roads to use today. Mm -hmm. We are using policy, the policies we implement are for what we want to consume today. Mm -hmm. That's not how to run a country. Mm -hmm. We run a country by making policies which will serve future generations. Davidson, yes, people perfect. know you on this station. Mm -hmm. You are a big brand. You've made a name. Thank you. I was telling you the other day that we met the first time in 2010. You are an MC for a very big event, so you are known. Mm -hmm. Why would you let all that go and go for a political seat? I think, Fred, for me, it's not letting it go, but adding on to it. Mm. Part of my journey has involved development. I started an initiative called uh, Hustle Yakob, maybe about uh, 2015, they're about. Mm -hmm. Got the first set of funding in 2017 to roll out big time. And uh, Hustle Yakob has been involved in youth empowerment, development, mm -hmm. entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. uh, skills training. And, uh, you know, as Robert has mentioned, uh, matters like poverty can be solved. The perennial poverty and unemployment we see in this country have solutions. It's not, um, uh, it's not rocket science. But... The, the government of the day is just not interested 
in, in empowering the people who need this empowerment, mm -hmm. the disenfranchised, the vulnerable in society, the youth. That is why, for me, I decided to vie. Mm -hmm. So apart from that initiative, I got involved in to health as well. Every time we'd read about unwanted pregnancies, um, STIs, HIV AIDS uh, rates spiraling out of control with mm -hmm. new infections being amongst adolescents. Mm -hmm. Um, they do not have access to these health facilities. Mm -hmm. They do not have access to these contraceptives. Even yes. the training, mm -hmm. uh, sensitization and advocacy is not being f uh, channeled that way. Look at what the Ministry of Health is focusing on. Mm -hmm. COVID-19 billionaires. Uh, and a ministry that could have uh, perhaps put that resource into, into better uh, practice and better use. So these kind of decisions are, are policy decisions that are made by people who are elected. Because the, the work of lawmakers, be it in the county assemblies or in the national assembly, is mm. to make law, is to look at budgets and prioritize uh, the, the expenditure of, of the day, whether it's in Nairobi or across the country. Mm. Um, apart from that, the kind of leadership and, and governance that we have in this country is, is, is selfish leadership. And, uh, and, and I believe that it's time. Uh, for a change. It's, it's time, time for the change of God. Mm -hmm. It's time for young people to take opportunities. Mm -hmm. So for, for everyone who's watching, who's youthful and mm -hmm. who has ideas, the moment mm -hmm. is now, as, as Alaya said, mm -hmm. it's easier now because we're in a very uh, great uh, democratic space. Yes, there are, there are great attempts, like you've just mentioned, uh, to curtail democracy, but it's possible. You can, uh, we've seen uh, precedents of mm. young people without money going door to door, knocking yes. on, on, uh, on, on yes. people's doors and uh, selling their manifestos mm. and, uh, and, and, and telling them what they want to do. And, and it's worked. We've, All right. we've seen that. All right. Jim, we've been in this situation talking about young people and leadership for a long time. But we have elected leaders before who are young, and we have seen them and the way they have performed, and especially in parliament. These young people want to go to the parliament, whichever parliament. Do you think these are the change agents that we want to see? Fred, this is the time. Um, and, and let me start by talking about why this is the time. It's because the numbers are right. Uh, politics is about numbers and politics is about we do not get into politics for the sake of it we get into politics because we want to get into power now the youth constituency has never been consolidated and the reason it's never been consolidated is because mm. we've never had people who look like us mm. people who speak like us mm. people who use technology like we do get into elections and who campaign using a language that we understand. Um, and often those people who've been doing that have been on the periphery. Robert Alai has been on these trenches for a long time. Mm. He might be getting <coughs> into politics active as an elector, but he's been around for a long time, yes. actually supporting from the background. Yes. But young people should not do that because it's about high time that we need to get there. Now onto the question of, we've seen young people who've been elected and they've not performed. Tom Boyer was a young person at the age of 29 or so when he was in making policies let's that we are benefiting the, the current to today. Parliament that we have. Let's <laughs> just look at that. Just, if you look at that. the current parliament, yeah. I mean, Babu Wino, with all his other issues, mm -hmm. if you go to his constituency, mm -hmm. it is performing well. Ndindi Nyoro, if you go to his constituency, it is performing well. So we like to isolate. When it comes to people who are marginalized, like young people and women, mm -hmm. we like to isolate and say, hey, um, these this young people, we elected them, but they are not performing. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the older people who mm -hmm. are performing. I can count for you the older people who've been here for decades doing nothing for our people, mm -hmm. yet when young people attempt even once to get into power, Parliament because these young people do not have any experience that experience you get it on the job mm -hmm. you get you learn how to be a politician by being a politician you learn how to lead by leading so <coughs> let us not say that the young people we have elected are not performing and forget that we have some of them who are exemplary if you saw the latest report on those who are performing well in Parliament there's a huge number of young people on that list first time members of parliament. Now imagine if we inject Robert Salai. Imagine if we inject DNG. You're campaigning for numbers. them on my show. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, oh. Robert, let yes. me get back to you. Yes. Be before I start the questions, you are vying yes. uh, which seat and where? I'm vying for the MP of Nyando. Nyando is in Kisumu, Kisumu County. Mm. Yeah, so, uh, and uh, you know, I've, I've, I've seen the challenges we have had as the people of Nyando the perennial flooding mm -hmm. common year in year out yes uh, it's a sugarcane growing area yes sugarcane is the only 
taxed raw material <coughs> in this country. Yes. The the funny thing is that Nyando has always elected somebody who has never grown sugar cane since he was born. <laughs> <laughs> so he doesn't understand the issues. Uh -huh. We have the rice, uh -huh. uh, Kitambo Aero irrigation scheme, which is in Nyando, yes. was bigger than the Mwea. Yes. Now Aero is a fraction of Mwea. There's a problem of uh, rice being, you know, even if you harvest today, there's nowhere to sell it. Yes. And you find uh, in some instances they're selling to Ugandans you know, raw rice, mm -hmm. and they're selling to Ugandans, then Ugandans are going to process it there, mm -hmm. then they bring it back to Kenya, mm. which is very wrong. And some of the towns in, 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 in Kisumu County mm -hmm. grew because of rice milling. You know, Ahero, Katito. Yes. Yeah. You are vying with which ticket? <laughs> I'm vying with the ODM. Why ODM? Because ODM is the only party which has democracy in its DNA. In it, Robert, is in, <laughs> in, 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 in what you've just said yes. on this show, yes. that we have old time narrative of old leaders yes. who've been in power for yes. such a long time yes. doing nothing. Yes. The ODM leader, Raila Odinga, yes. has been in the business yes. for so long. Not Are you telling <coughs> Raila Odinga that he's old and that's why Raila you want not, to come and take the money? No, Raila is not the MP of Nyando, but Raila is also giving. He's the leader of Nyanza ODM. Region. No, they, no, it's not Even the leader of Nyan Nyanza. Raila has never fired in Nyanza, but he's the leader of ODM. Mm. Raila leads, has, has always been an MP in Kibra, yeah? which is a cosmopolitan uh, constituency. But you know, let me tell you one thing with Raila. Yes. The, the, the fact that you can sit, criticize, and attack leadership of this country here, mm. sometimes because of Raila. You know, the, the, the kind of mm -hmm. things he fought for, mm. the kind of uh, freedom we have now, is because of the big sacrifice of people like Raila. You, you they think it's time for him to retire? I, I, you know, you know, the the problem with politics is that you cannot tell people. You, you've seen in the U.S. Mm. You have Speaker Pelosi, and all these, sure. you know, some of them are too old. Even the I president. All, you know, age comes with maturity, and and that's why I say people like Hungary, you cannot wish them away. I've never told any leader in politics. But you've said they are old, old time you know, leaders. No, no, I'm <laughs> saying they are old, mm -hmm. but people who are old and have no clue. You know, but Raila, at <laughs> least, you know, there are people who are old, <coughs> but they are wiser with mm. age, like mm. the old wine. Mm. You know, like Raila, without the handshake, you guys would have been in a mess. We'll come back to that. <laughs> yes. DNG. Yes, sir. You are vying for a seat. Correct. This will come as a shocker to our viewers. Where are you vying and what position? So I'm vying within the city of Nairobi, mm -hmm. Nairobi County. Mm -hmm. I'm vying for MCA of uh, Woodley. MCA. Kenyatta, Golf Coast Ward. MCA. Yes. MCA, Member of County Assembly. Davidson Gibwini. That is I. DNG. Yes. MCA. For the first time you're hearing it tonight. Why? Why not? And that's the question. An MCA. Mm -hmm. Robert, in an interview in, I think, 20, 2015, <laughs> he said, yes. he was at KTN, yes. and he said, MCA is a small position. <laughs> no, was I, I, I didn't say <laughs> it's, it's a, I, I have listened to that whole <laughs> no, conversation. No, no, no. He said it's a small position. I didn't say that. Why go for an MCA? I'd say this. First and foremost, my, all my agenda that has to do with community development is about the people. So um, in terms of how best to empower, impact, and change the scenario and the lifestyle of, of the people of, of, of Woodley and the people of Kibra as a constituency, it's by being on the ground, dealing with the issues that are, are being faced. I'll, allow me to just articulate a little bit mm. what is happening in our world. Mm. Kibra is the largest slum in sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, believe you me, I'm still so, trying to so just get your, your, your allow, vibe allow on MCA. Just, allow me to just take you there. Yes. For how long will Kibra remain the largest slum in sub-Saharan Africa? If you look at uh, unemployment and poverty, it's at an all-time high with a lot of people living in that area. How can we empower those, those people to, to, to rise up? How can we empower them to, to improve their livelihoods, to, to take their hustles to the next level, whether mm. it is talent development, whether mm. it is sports, whether it is um, businesses and setting up businesses? Because what happens in the Mta mm -hmm. is you set up a, a, a biashara today, tomorrow Kanjo comes and <laughs> chotas it, wanakubomolea. Mm. You come up with another uh, uh, idea, for example, uh, Mira. You're selling Mira. What are you told? There's a new bylaw that you, if you do not park Mira like this, you have X number of penalties or X uh, uh, months or years prison time. Mm. So the system, unfortunately, has been rigged to such a, a way that it is going to sup it's, it's suppressing the people who are trying to, to do their level best to come mm. out off the ground and, and uh, live a, a life that, that, that is decent. All right. So the only way to change that is by legislation. 
some of these laws that you've seen <coughs> trending about how uh, draconian they are are bylaws. What bylaws means for our viewers who are perhaps in shock to hear that DNG is vying for MCA are laws that are created uh, I'm shocked. Conceptualized Believe you me, I'm shocked. at the county assembly level. Mm. So at, at, forget even national or senate. Ukuchini, hapon yo pali shida ipo. So we have to start bottom up. We cannot start saying that we are going to uh, solve uh -huh. the issues uh, uh -huh. top layer. Yet at the ground, the, the core, the foundation is is is, is faulty. Bottom and up, it, and, that sounds and, like order. And the rot of the tooth is is deep in the decay. Uh -huh. You understand? Yeah. We must be able to uproot that problem yes. and solve problems for our country. If we cannot solve the poverty issue in Kibra, mm. how can we solve the poverty and unemployment issue in Kenya? Hold how? still. Hold still. You are vying with which party? I'm vying with UDA, United Democratic Alliance Party. What are you hearing, Jim India? From ODM to ODA, young people? <coughs> Change. Um, what, 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 I'm, what, what I'm hearing, yes. um, Fred, is sometimes you want to be idealistic. We have tried the new constitution since the first election in 2013. Mm. And we know that there's something called, uh, you know, being, a, a, being an independent candidate. And we can count how many independent candidates are there. Yes. To get into, I said, nobody's getting into politics to play around. If young people are serious, they want to get into politics, we have to get into politics to win. Mm. Now, how do you win an election in this country? It is through the political party system. If you're vying in an area and you have mapped out, because part of what you do as a politician is you have to do your homework. Mm. If I look at my constituency, mm. who are here? How do they vote? What patterns have we seen in the past? So that then, once you know that they, they, they vote for ODM, then throw your hat in and show that you get into nominations and show that you're on the ground and get to win. Because we do not expect that young people will come and form their own political parties. And Why not? To Why not? Why not? It's because of the nature of our politics in this country. The nature of our politics is that it does not support new, new political parties that are not ethnic-based. That is the nature of politics in our country. So you're telling and a so, lie that he's vying with no, ODM because not, he's from Luo Nyanza? That is not, no. A lie has given the reasons why he's vying. Mm. So I am not speaking for him. <laughs> All I am saying is mm. the nature of our politics is that majority of our parties are ethnic-based yep. and most of the time they are tied around individuals. Yes. And so the individual, people concentrate a lot on who is the president, which party or coalition is they vying for, and people vote six-piece mm. in, in most of these places. There's a lot of education that we have to do among our voters to change that. Yes. But until then, if you want to inject fresh ideas, if you want to inject fresh people, then we have a find a way of beating the very system that has sidelined young people for a long time. Mm. And to beat it, you have to get into it, infest it, get in by your numbers, then change it from within. Uh, 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 Robert, you've said that um, this is the time. Yes. And we have seen with the numbers from uh, uh, the, the last census that we heard, that we had 70% young people. And, and you're right, this <coughs> is the right time. Why can't you just mobilize young people to form an, a coalition that not only will it go to the national polls with a presidential aspirant and just mobilize as, as many young people to follow you rather than just joining a party that is established? I, I, I think the, because they, they've been there. They've been there for such a long time. I, I, I think, I think the, the problem in Kenya is very deep. It's not as easy as we think. And you know the Kenya, the young people in this country, Sometimes it's not very easy to mobilize and, and, and you know, funding a presidential campaign is very expensive. Right. It takes a lot of resources, a lot of logistics, experience, you know, so you might try it now, but they're going to be beat you with experience. So the best strategy is to have a bite at a time. You're fighting elephants. So if you're fighting elephants and you are like, uh, what, a rat, the best, a nimble at a time. Every bite you have counts as a success. So the best is when I see people like DNG going for the MCA, you know, starting from the grassroots, I never say the MCA is a very... In fact, if it was for <coughs> me, Fred, if yes. it was for me, yes. I would have gone for the MCA. The only thing is that I've mapped out the problems of my constituency. Public service is not, is, is not for making money. If I wanted to look for money, I would go for the private service. 
public service is for service to people. And mm. the people's problems are what I'm going to solve. And the people's uh, uh, problem don't you feel that you're going to be assimilated into the ideologies of ODM? I don't just think be merged in and not make any difference. I, I think I think it's, there's no ways of ODM. You would talk about that the ways of ODM. There's no way <laughs> the ways of ODM. In fact, ODM. If you check on the parties, the, the, the parties in this country, mm. ODM is one of the best parties you can ever. You know, if you are going to look in for what you, democratically, organization-wise, logistics, they're going to, you know, but for any party, tell me which party has existed even from the 205 up to now. Very few of them would stand that. ODM have structures. You know, if you are going to look for the legal uh, committees, you are going to look for NEC, you are going to look for officials of the party, you are going to look for office staff. ODM has even its own headquarters, which has been there for very long. They even bought their own headquarters recently. You know, sure. some of these parties are briefcase parties, including some of the parties we are seeing, uh, which are commanding big numbers here. They don't have clear lines of who is in charge and who is not in charge you've seen the mess in jubilee now you see there's uh, some members of jubilee are opposition in uda you know the, the challenge of political parties but odm comes in with the experience yeah. and nurturing young people some of the members of uda and uh, jubilee <coughs> are in their positions because of ODM. Mm. ODM nurtured them. ODM mentored them. They, yeah. were, they, they were behind the think tank of ODM. Mm -hmm. So I, I think political parties are not, not all bad. Uh, 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 David Zon. Yes. You, you are vying with UDA. Mm -hmm. UDA is led by the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya. He's been the Deputy President for now close to eight years. Why would you want to bring changes while the people you are with they are already in government. What I'd say is that, uh, first and foremost, public service, uh, as, as uh, Ali has just mentioned, has to do with the people. So first, we also have to understand what do the people want. The people, majority, want change. The people, majority, want to be able to earn a living. Uh, the people, majority, do not want to be have their country locked. They want to be able to earn. Whatever, what, what, in despite or regardless of whatever profession you're in, whether you're a barber or you're an artist or you're, you're a digital executive mm. or you're a strategist, you want to be able to earn. So what uh, UDA represents is inclusion, inclusion or inclusivity, meaning that it's a party for everybody. UDA is a, uh, is a party that is not mapped uh, according to, to, to tribal uh, uh, formation. It's a party that is about an agenda, and the agenda is the uplifting of the Why common one. Why can't that agenda be, be in government today because they're in government? Well, I cannot the speak... The president I can't, in, I, is in government. It's, it's your party. It, indeed it it's is. It's your party. But Fred, I cannot speak for a position that I've never held. I wish I was the, perhaps the president of the Republic of Kenya. Kamba. No, no, no. No, no, no. You see, Perhaps I can organize an interview for you <laughs> and the deputy <laughs> president and our party leader to come and articulate his agenda mm. and follow him. And, and what we know is that uh, they're putting together a big document called the bottom-up economics. Uh, allow me to just give you an example of what I have seen on ground. In less than one minute. Yes, mm -hmm. I've been part of what is happening in Kiamba. Mm -hmm. you, you know there's a by-election. For the first time, I've witnessed campaigns that are not about hate, that are not about um, d division, that are not about violence and that are not about uh, shika hii miatano na unipatie kura yako ili nikuwe mbunge. For the first time, campaigns mm. are about an agenda. Wale watu wa soko, wale watu wa mtura, wale watu wa boda boda. How can we improve their livelihoods? That's what I stand for. When I started Hustle Yako Initiative years before UDA, that's what I've been driving. If you look at my, my, my track record, it's all about how can we bring artists to the table? How can we bring talented creatives and innovations to the table such that young people can use their skill sets, God-given mm. gifts and talents to earn a living? Mm. That is what we stand for yep. at UDA. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that is what we want to enforce in government because we cannot bring this change outside of government as has been rightfully said here change is determined by the people who sit on the table and say this is where we are prioritizing our resources as a country these are our pillars this is our agenda yes. and youth have never been in the agenda yes. and we have no representation jim you did you have mentioned here on this show that the deputy president is in government but he's leading uh, a team that looks like is opposing the same government. <coughs> what ideology, uh, ideologies are we setting for young people when people like DNG are joining that same party that looks like is, is fighting their president? Fred, I've often said and I maintain 
um, that the, you know the deputy president is a ghost worker in government um, because you know he's earning but not turning up to to work. So we are paying someone to occupy an office which he's not executing what he's paid for, and that I maintain. True. However, mm. we must run away from this attempt to paint the scenes of presidents and their deputies and people who've been here forever. With, we must delineate that because part of this, this, the, the struggle that young people have mm. is how do I separate myself from the accusations that are going on around my president or my deputy president. If today we are going to say that we will not vote for DNG because the deputy president has certain allegations against him. So which allegations do we have against DNG? He's, he's the son of that family. No, the he's family not. Of Huda. You see, and we, the father is the deputy president. We have started at, at the premise of yes. to get into power, yes. we must use vehicles which are called political parties. All right. To choose a political party, yes. we must choose one that looks like it has a mathematical chance of winning an election. <laughs> <laughs> Short commercial break. I'm having, of course, Jim India speaking to us about matters politics. Robert Alai, he'll be vying for Nyando MP and, of course, DNG. He'll be vying for an MC. That is like breaking news. We'll take a short commercial <laughs> break. We'll be back with more in a short while. Let us leave the criminal justice system out of the politics of Kenya. Those who have ideas, let them bring their ideas to the people. But today, any politician or any political leader who is seen to be inclining towards the deputy president is being persecuted and prosecuted by DCI, ESCC, DPP, and all state agencies, including our business community, who are being persecuted by KRA simply because they work with the deputy president. Ukiwa utaambiwa uende uone ESCC, DCI, sijui wapi, nani, nani, ya sikupe shida. Tune, tulipitia hayo yote, tunamana tunakuambia, tulipitia hayo yote. Na kile kikubwa watakuambia, ndiyo ujue vile wenzangu wamesema. There is no way hawa watu wataenda kusucceed kupigana na ufisadi katika taifaletu la Kenya. All right, those are older <coughs> members of parliament. Well, they are still in Jubilee. <laughs> But their older member of parliament, or AKA Tangatanga, Tanga, speaking against the DCI, the KRA, and others. Taking your SMSs on 111, 444, 311. Some of you are saying togetherness. We, uh, social media involving matters that affect us in terms of voting. I think that SMS came in as a half. Uh, I am George from Rai. It's time for youths to join politics. We need new and energetic blood who actually understand the problems. We as youth face, I just love this show. Thank you very much. Somebody else on Facebook, you're saying, that is at Switch TV. They're saying tipping point. It's on high demand hapa Facebook. Asante sana. That is Ambenge Oyando. Paul Karioki, I have my eyes on the show. Ask Robert, what happened from being a critic of Uhuru Kenyatta to singing political hosannas <laughs> to the head of state? That is a question thrown direct to you. You know, I, I don't know political or something. <laughs> Kenyans are very funny. The youth are very funny. And you, the youth need to get into comedy. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, yes. I, I don't know singing political, but because I've been supporting the handshake. The point is we are supporting the handshake. And you want the president... It's not so much about Uru Kenyatta. No, the president. You let the president finish his term. Oh dear. Let the president finish his term. Uh, you know, let the president uh, finish his term. You know, it's, this it's, is the it's, same ODM that in 2017... But, it, but it's funny yeah. that the people who voted for him three yes. times... Are now more angry with him, <laughs> and he told you, boss. Why do you think that's the case? Ah, you know, because people are seeing the reality now, and now they want us to drown with them. We drown <laughs> the country. We go back to the politics of antagonizing each other, yes. fighting. Then we get into 2022. Yes, we will be killing each other. We are not going that way mm. again. Mm. We are not going to demonstrate. Oh, you know, whatever happens in 2022, mm. you will never see ODM demonstrating again in the street for you. I that <laughs> Uda is going to do that one for us this time. <laughs> Uda is going to be chanting Akiyetu. Yes. <laughs> it's not ODM. I, I ask them whether they support the idea. This is from Shira Muigai. <clears throat> ask them whether they support the idea that elected leaders should have a degree 
as a prerequisite before vying, do you think we should have a degree for an MCA or an MP? I think uh, it's important to also uh, underscore what is the purpose of a degree or education for that matter. Education uh, for, for a long time has been about uh, mass production of Kenyan citizens, mm. where we have people who are unable to, to ideate, unable to think outside the box. And for me, I stand uh, uh, firm that uh, our education system needs to be overhauled. It needs to be more practical. It needs to uh, be able to appreciate that. You're not that answering the question. Hold on. Energy. I'm You're getting not. there. I'm getting there. Mm. It needs to be able to, to, to empower people to think. Because uh, you, you've mentioned that uh, I've built a career of, of talent. Yes, for the last 17 years. I've not used... How old are you? Um, uh, 35. All right. So I said you now seventeen, uh, 17 uh -huh. straight out of form four. Mm. I, I've only used my my, uh, and I have a master's degree, a global executive MBA from USIU. I've only used my my degree once, where I was going to pitch <laughs> to a board mm -hmm. for a consultancy. Mm. All the other work I've done for brands in Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Nigeria, I've, I've done productions in India. I've been all over the place. I've never been asked for a degree. What I've been asked for is my resume. Resume meaning what have you done and what can you do today? And that is what leadership is about. So you can look at it differently. You can look at it like, yes, we need people who are intelligent, of course. But what is the gauge of intelligence? Are we intelligent because we speak good English? Are we intelligent because we spent hours doing a PhD? Or are we intelligent because, as you've said uh, uh, before you asked this question, we understand what people need, we can relate to people and we have solutions. Mm. So what is intelligence? Mm. So that is the conversation rather than what is a degree, what is not a degree. That is notwithstanding. Uh, 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 Robert, yes. do you support what some members of parliament, they were saying that in parliament, but in senate they have said no. Mm. Do you support the idea of having MCAs, MPs, governors, deputy governors, the president, deputy, having a degree? I support the idea of leaders having degrees, but I I support, I also don't support the ideas of all the leaders having degrees because degree is not the criteria you can use to gauge on leadership. Mm -hmm. If you were to ask me one size which can fit all, mm -hmm. I would recommend that all leaders who want to go into public service go for NYS training for nine months. <laughs> 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 because nine months in NYS, you're going to learn public service. You're going to chom alarm. You are going to be burning you, tamar. You went there yourself. Nine months. No, I've seen. I've seen. I've. 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 I've, I've helped enough boys mm. to go there mm. to change their lives from crime to being better mm. people and now law abiding. So you all leaders should it go makes you patriotic. Yes, nine months training. If you ask me today to stop and to you, wait, you can. I can yourself. go. I'll go. I'll go. Nine months. I'll go. But as I I want to change lives. Mm. This is not. I'm not going to solve my problem. I want to solve people's problems. Mm. Because I'm seeing people are suffering. You know, they need not to suffer like this. Uh, Jim, a conversation that we, we've had before, and I know you are of the view that we should not be having degrees. You are learned yourself. Why wouldn't you want our leaders to be learned, those who are learned, to vie for these posts? Um, if there's someone with a degree and wants to vie, let them vie. However, we cannot marginalize the largest, because only about 1% or there about, of the, a very small percentage of this population have degrees. So you want to marginalize a majority of our population from accessing leadership positions on the virtue of they do not have access to degrees. Why don't they have degrees? Because we have not expanded the education system mm -hmm. and access mm -hmm. to it yeah. because they do not have the money to go through it. Yes. So they are not getting into leadership because of structural reasons that we have created. Mm -hmm. But number two, yes. that very uh, law infringes on the rights of 18 year olds 19 year olds 20 year olds yes. 21 year olds yes. they cannot vie for any position in this country a 21 year old or a 22 year old cannot vie for an mca position if that law is passed because they do not have a degree so mm -hmm. that cannot be a law that we that as young people we can support mm -hmm. that is a law that marginalizes us further mm -hmm. so if you want to allow young people mm -hmm. to get involved and and run and get into elective positions the degree is not a reason. As I have always said, the qualifier for leadership is your ability to influence. It is character. It is integrity. That, for me, are the qualifiers and the, the, the hard to serve. Yes. Every other thing are non-issues. Let's, let's get to some national politics now. Robert, you've heard what uh, <coughs> Tanga Tanga or UDA members of parliament are saying. Do mm. you think, do you really think that the DCI is being used to target Tanga Tanga members? I don't, I, I, don't, I don't think that the DCI is being used to target, 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 target members. You know, like, 
What do Tangatanga members have? Oh God. What do Tangatanga members <laughs> have? You know, what have they done wrong? They should ask themselves. Yes. If you're attracting bees, ask yourself, have you packed yourself with, the, with honey? Why you know, them? there's something on them. There's something on them. There's a reason why these people are coalescing together. You know, they're, they're, they're ganging up on the government because there's something they did and somebody did for them. Yeah? They looted the country. The DCI is going after the loot. Are you saying it's only Tangatanga -tanga members of parliament or former Jubilee members of parliament that are looting the country? They, they looted the country. You know, I can, I can mention Kensa for you... Kensa was here, but without, they were not I, I, if, if it was not for the lawsuits, mm -hmm. I can mention for you 10 Tangatanga -tanga leaders mm -hmm. and what they did. You have the dozier. I have the dozier. Give us the dozier. From DCI. G give us the dozier. The, from the DCI. <laughs> give us you know, the dozier. I don't, I don't want it to be <laughs> shut down. <laughs> Somebody can sue you to your last cent. Davidson. Yes. That, those are your friends. You've actually told me those are your friends. <laughs> and you've seen what they've said. Allah is saying the, here that they looted the country. Do you believe that? I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm not I'm, I'm not conversant with this information. In fact, I've just thrown my heart into the ring. I'm not aware of who was stolen what money. But Kenyans uh, have, have always been talking about corruption, right? Yeah. And for, from, from time immemorial. What we need to think about is why do people loot? What systems can be put in place to prevent people from looting? How can we uh, create a better government? How can but we... How can we set systems that by those who... Robert is saying have looted. How I can, can they set up a system? For me, I cannot say who has looted because I do not know. I cannot say yes or no. I have no idea. What I can also say to the DCI is that they need to focus on truth rather than political witch hunting. That is so important. I'll give you an example. I did. A, a, we were, uh, I was participating in a movement called Unlock Our Country movement. And NIS were deployed at our press conference. NIS, half the time, to disperse <laughs> a press conference How by did artists. You know you are older? By artists, this was even before I declared that I'm going to buy uh, on a UDA ticket. And it's so strange that the government sees everybody who is against it as somebody who is a crook or somebody who is, you know, a, a bad person trying to do bad things to destabilize the government. No, we're calling out the government for its ills. And that is what democracy is about. That we have the right as citizens of this republic, because this is a republic, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. We have the right to criticize our government, to call them out and say, eh, eh, hold on, what you're doing is wrong. How are we going to earn? You understand? Uh, 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 Jim, you, you, can the, you can be the arbitrator here. These two gentlemen are saying, he's saying, those are looters. He's saying, no, we need to use DCI in the right way. Which way? Um, I mean, we cannot sit here and enable... Um, enable individuals to use institutions of government to settle personal scores. We saw it in 2017, 2013, when ODM were on the receiving end. We saw it in 2017 when kids were being murdered, young people were being murdered, and the police, some of them were being used, you know, and told, go to place X, Y, and Z, and we still have people who have those wounds. So we cannot create an enabling environment where uh, it, such institutions as the DCI, as the police, are being used to, to settle, and the ESCC are used to settle personal scores. Mm. We do not have any evidence. Any one of them who is being persecuted, as they call it, I mean, persecution is such a bigger word. I yeah. wish they were around in 1992 and before. <laughs> they would have perhaps understood the meaning of persecution or in the times of Jesus. But <laughs> we cannot allow um, that leaders who are seen not to be uh, supporting or anti-establishment to then institutions are used to which to to uh, and we must guard that for me that mm -hmm. the independence of institutions must be guarded if there are valid reasons why they are being hunted then that's fine i mean we've seen how many of them have cases in court that are actually substantial cases and that are being are being prosecuted mm -hmm. very few of them so you can tell these are funny games that of yeah. politics that are being played and that for us is if we continue enabling that then in 2022 when the police will be deployed in place x the thing some people will be saying but when we were being hunted like right now ODM members are saying when we were being killed in 2017 the rest of you were celebrating and saying that the police must do their work so now we will keep quiet so as a country we must set that bar of institutions must remain independent. What is wrong is wrong. What is wrong is wrong and what's right is right. Mm -hmm. So this, where 
you you support it when it benefits you and oppose it when it does not benefit you. Mm. Some of the people crying that they are being persecuted today were celebrating loudly and we can show tweets and videos of them celebrating loudly back then. Mm. So until you get that <laughs> consistency from our leaders, uh, we might be in this for a while. Uh, uh, let's talk about BBI. It's a case in court and we will not touch into them, uh, into the items they are in. But Robert, day three and tomorrow is the last day of BBI hearing. What's your take on the, those three days? I think I've, I've seen great, great, great points, uh, you know, made by the by the appellants. Yeah. Uh, the president's team, the IBC, you know, the uh, representative from uh, from ODM and mm -hmm. so on. Mm -hmm. They presented a very valid case. You know, the arguments. You know, no, 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 no. You know, the immunity of the president and also the, the fact that the people can change the constitution and who really initiated the process yes which is uh Mashima junet and, and <laughs> 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 so they're the people who had the handshake in 2018 yes you know you, 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 if today i organize if, if today i organize something an event in in nyanza and i call the president then you'll say the president is the one behind the project so, no, so the I, I, BBI I, I, belongs to Junet <laughs> Mohammed. Junet <laughs> Mohammed and Dennis Oweya. Oh. <laughs> hey. the, there's a tweet I'm trying to get that you had said yes. earlier today. Yes. I'll get it. Okay. In a serious court, Supreme Court, this is Ahmed <clears throat> Nasir Abdullahi. Yes. I'm sure that's yes. the person you are referring yes. to. Has no place. Yes. None of the clients were interested in him, even for free. Yes. He represented the president in 2013. Yes. In 2017. Yes. But They're by and large, yeah. we have seen him supporting the deputy president. Do you think if he was supporting the president, he would have been well, the deputy president, part? Uh, <laughs> the deputy president also knew the lawyers, but they didn't see him fit. <laughs> DNG, you are <laughs> take on three days <laughs> of trial. Mimi spend if pindi. That is what I can say. Uh -huh. Spend if pindi. Uh -huh. I cannot support uh, that kind of thing. Now listen, we have spent so much money on this BBI. Who is it benefiting? Couldn't we have reprioritized that money elsewhere? You understand? During a, a time where there's a pandemic, 20 billion. businesses are on their knees. Isn't that money that can be used to uplift those businesses that have collapsed? Because the list of businesses that have collapsed is phenomenal. And also, the, the manner in which Allah is looking at you. The, 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 the list of people mm. who have lost their livelihoods as a result of you know us taking money that could have been deployed to alleviate poverty and to deal with with this crisis <laughs> let, let me not even touch healthcare for example did you know that uh, nhif does not cover uh, covid-19 did you know that so what does that mean the, we are spending so much money on bbi that is not helping anybody yet we could have injected funds into nhif so that the ordinary kenyan the mwananchi the citizen who who is desperate for this kind of health care can be able to afford or can be able to use that card where his or her parent or himself or herself has been uh, admitted into icu to swipe and go home without a bill but now we have people who are perhaps thriving who are on their knees in debt loans harambe just because um, they, they have they have no they have no money, so it's 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 going round and round, and all these issues are correlated. But our government's priority is BBI. Our government's priority is creating jo uh, the jobs. government which jobs. you are. Hold on, hold on. Me are not in any government. I am not in Gazette. The party leader is is in that government. But I'm here in my capacity as Davidson Gibwini, DNG. MCM Tarajiwa <laughs> Woodley, Kenyatta <laughs> Golf Course World 2022. Now hold, hold that thought. Robert, yes. you are a huge proponent of BBI. Yes. Do you agree with those sentiments? No, I don't. Uh, you know, BBI is going to change lives. And wherever, oh, what wh lives? wherever, wherever, what wherever, lives? wherever, wherever, <laughs> wherever the deputy president opposes anything, please run away from him. <laughs> because he's going to, the, this constitution is so much defending. Uh, how is it going to benefit young people? You know, And don't tell me the 70 years tax. Mm. We don't need that. We just need <laughs> Tell me, how is it going to benefit you know, young you know, people? You know, people, people don't see the opportunity created when we change the laws and we open up the space for everybody to feel that they belong. You know, because the country, where do you come from? We came from a place where some people thought that they, will, they might never get a share, of their, their equal share of the, of, the, of the leadership of this country. Mm. But now the president is bringing it up and saying, you guys, even the, he brought the conversation about the two tribes, and he said that it, it doesn't have to be the two. Can we now expand it further and say that all these other tribes, even if you elect an Ogiek today, he can be the leader, the president of this country called Kenya. 
You see, May, may I respond? This, this, this is this is where this is where uh, BBI comes in. You know, inclusivity. Mm -hmm. And if you don't put the you inclusivity, know, people people, but people we are, are people creating people. positions for several people. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not for how is that inclusive? You know, if you elect a lie, it's mm -hmm. not it's not about a lie. This is why you know because the, the leaders in this country have made positions about themselves. It should not be that way. If you are elected, you are serving the people. You are not serving your, you, yourself, and your family. This is the problem. We need to remove these people from the public service. Let people go to private service. And if you gave me a chance to be the MP, I will push for bills but, to but try I, I, to I, I, make... Ali, let me just be on your own. We, we are creating yes. 17 new constituencies. Uh, political constituencies. What is wrong with that? L let me ask you. Yes. You have seen our wage bill. Yes. You have seen the amount of money, we, we, we the loans, the debts that we have. Yes. Do we have the capacity to have additional 70 members of parliament? Do we... You, you want to be an MP. Uh, Would you be advocating uh, 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 for uh, uh, such a thing? Uh, uh, how much is an MP paid? How much is an MP paid? One million? One, one point million. Two, one point two million. So the allowances? It, humongous. It, it, it represents how many people? Let's say an average 150,000 people in, in a constituency. But do we need, do we need that? We need that. One Why? Mi one million to represent the issues of 150,000. What is wrong with that? We have an NCA. How we many have NCAs an MCA, in, you know, MC, in a constituency? These people have levels. You know, levels of representation. You cannot say that an MCA and MP are doing the same thing. The MP, the MCA, we might argue on the senator and the women rep, mm. who are all the MPs of the county, mm. doing the same thing. But we cannot say the MP and the MCA represent the, the same group of people. Mm. Let me go you know, to DNG. He wanted to respond. Mm. Respond to that. I feel like devolution needs to be given a real chance. And I stand by that. Um, devolution has really worked. If you go to some, some uh, counties, where there was nothing before devolution. Yes. Now there are hotels. Yes. There are people who've set up businesses and who are also employing people from that area. Yes. So there's a lot of development. I feel like this constitution and the spirit of this constitution was phenomenal. We came from a dark past. We all know about that dark past. We don't need to belabor that point here. Mm. Now, um, the spirit of the constitution was, was about devolution. And what does devolution mean? Resources trickling down you know, to that level that he's talked about, the MCA level, the, the ward, mm. which is the, the that small uh, area, mm -hmm. you know, that is the, 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 the bottom most level of government. Okay. All okay. right. So Hold that thought because I'm being told we don't have a lot of time and I mm. want to bring in Jim very uh, quickly. Jim, we've heard from UDA members of parliament. Nowadays I call them UDA because that party is what they're saying they're going to run. No, you have to say UDA. You have to say UDA. <laughs> UDA, UDA. They have said. Kazi time, Kazi. <laughs> <laughs> time and time again, they have said that we are creating position for few people through the BBI. Do you hold that thought? Um, I've, I mean, I've said it here in the past. I think there are few, very few clauses that are progressive in the BBI document, like injecting money into the counties. I think those are progressive. And there are a couple of clauses that are neither here nor there. Mm. They, they are not as important. If they were there, they would not. I think what we are witnessing in courts today, Fred, we take it for granted as a country to have legal brains sitting at that level of the courts to discuss matters of the place of the people, the place of the president, and that the ruling of the court will be binding to all. Those are not things that are seen in Africa every single day. Mm. Those are things, those are, those are, that, those are very progressive moments in our country right. that we must appreciate. Okay. And the decision of that court will change tremendously the trajectory that the next president and the next members of parliament will take. A few SMSs coming in through triple one, triple four, triple one. Bona Robert Raila was Kibera's MP from 1992 to 2013. <laughs> what did your leader do at that time? You'll answer them on <laughs> on Twitter. Hello, Fred. I'm <laughs> Wait, why is Raila the governor of Nairobi? How what did he do all that scientific. time? Right. Kibera is still a slum. No, 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 no. no. Raila started the slum upgrade uh, uh, upgrade project. How project. did how did that project go? Kibaki snatched it away from me. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to see my high school cube mate clearly articulating <laughs> politics. Kudos, Jim India. That is Orinda Robert Santesana. All right, guys, I'll give you one second, one second. Just tell us where, are, because you are young people, I am young. Where are you vying your MP so that our viewers can relate? I'm, I'm, I'm vying for the ticket of Nyando MP in 2022. Nyando MP 2022. 2022. Yes. Yourself? I'm vying for MCA. Woodley Kenyatta Golf Course Ward, Nairobi County. All right. There are two things that are important in politics. The first is money. And I can't remember what the other one is by Paul Wilson. The views described on this show are individual <laughs> views and do not portray 
the views of Switch TV. Until next Thursday, my name is Frederick Mwiteriri. My sign language interpreter is Michael Maidia. Do have yourself a good night. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for having time for us. <laughs>